Hi, my name is Greg Petrix, and I created this video to try to give you an idea of how you can do some remote mathematics instruction using a MacBook Pro, an iPad Pro, an iPad Pencil, the Zoom teleconferencing software, and the software GeoGebra. Before I talk anything about what I'm going to do, let me show you what's possible. So what I've just done is I've, just so you know, and I'm going to tell you to do this later, I've connected my iPad Pro to my MacBook Pro, and it's now acting as a second display. And I can bring in GeoGebra, a popular open source technical computing software for teaching and learning mathematics. And I can do all sorts of fun math stuff in this window. Um, I could... A lot of function. I could take its derivative. And also with the iPad pencil, I could use the pen to make notes on here. Pretty neat, not too hard to do. Uh, you can also put other programs on your second display slash iPad or iPad Pro, and you can uh, write notes on there. For instance, you can use the popular software Notability, uh, put it on your iPad and draft, write notes on there, and then save them as PDFs and put them on your learning management system. So that's what's possible. Let me talk a little bit about the technical requirements and then the technical process so you know how to do this uh, on your own. All right, so I'm going to disconnect. Uh, that's just you know, obviously that was not a very long uh, demonstration of what you might do. Your lesson is gonna go on for quite a bit of time. Um, I wanna talk, I just give you a, I just wanted to do a proof of concept of what you could possibly do. You can put anything on this that you like. You could show videos on this. You could put uh, notability on here and write notes on here. You could put your Canvas or Moodle page on here and talk students through that. Uh, Anything really is the possibility. And I guess this isn't really limited to mathematics instruction either. Uh, anybody can do this. So let's talk a little bit about the technical requirements. Um, so first of all, let me tell you about the Macintosh Pro that I'm using made by Apple. And I'm just gonna share the screen of my computer. So let's take a look. Um, this particular computer that I'm using is uh, running Mac OS Catalina 1015.3. That's the newest operating system as of Friday, March 20th, 2020. It's a 13 inch from 2017, um, 3.1 gigahertz dual core Intel Core i5. I've got 16 gigs of RAM. Um, I don't know why that wouldn't highlight. It's uh, not necessarily the best machine, but it's a pretty good machine. It's also not the newest machine. It's three years old at this point. Good computer though. Um, the iPad Pro I have is a 10 and a half inch iPad Pro. It's a couple years old. They certainly make better ones. And the Apple Pencil that I have is the model that was the newest model when the iPad Pro 10 and a half inch came out. I presume that pretty much everything's about the same now. So those are the things that I have. Um, the, I also am running GeoGebra. Uh, I like GeoGebra Classic 5. Uh, you can get it at geogebra.org, GeoGebra Classic 5. Uh, this is a great piece of open source program, uh, mathematical computing software. And I'm also running Zoom, the popular teleconferencing software. That's what I'm using to record this video at this very second. Uh, okay, so those are the, the pieces of equipment that I have. Uh, MacBook Pro, it's like between $1,500 and $2,000. iPad Pro is like, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars. And uh, the Apple Pencil is about a hundred dollars. So all told, it's around $2,500 setup, but you're good to go. The, computer, the video camera that I'm using and the microphone I'm using to record this are built into the MacBook Pro, so that's all set. But for $2,500, you can get remote instruction going pretty seamlessly and pretty slickly um, right away. Uh, not so bad. So uh, let me show you a little bit about how to make the connection. So I'm gonna undo the connection. Um, so first of all, to get started, make sure your Mac, MacBook Pro, you're logged in on uh, your iCloud account. 
So uh, you can see what iCloud your account you're logged into by going into system preferences. And like, for instance, my name is Greg Petrix and I'm logged in with my Apple ID. Uh, so I'm logged into my iCloud account on my MacBook Pro. And I'm also logged into the same iCloud account on my iPad Pro. Uh, and also I've connected the iPad Pencil to my iPad, excuse me, Apple Pencil to my iPad. Uh, that's a pretty self-explanatory thing. You can just Google, how do I connect my iPad Pencil to my iPad? Um, keep calling it iPad Pencil. Apple Pencil to my iPad. Uh, that's not too hard to do. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, or just Google your way through that one. Um, once you uh, have uh, the computer, you're logged into your Apple account, the iPad's logged into your Apple account, um, and the iPad Pencil, excuse me, Apple Pencil is connected to the iPad. Uh, make sure that both devices are on the same Wi-Fi network. So I'm at home right now because we're all supposed to be working from home. And uh, that's, um, I'm just logged into my home Wi-Fi. Uh, so both devices are on the same Wi-Fi network. And then to make the connection, it's pretty easy. Uh, once both are on the same network, uh, the iPad's on, the MacBook Pro is on, you click this icon and you just connect to your iPad. Um, if you don't see this icon, go into the system preferences. Uh, open up displays and make sure this box is checked. You see how it open when I check it and uncheck it, it makes that icon go away. Uh, you need this box to be checked. Um, now there is one sort of careful thing I wanted to make a note of. I noticed that in testing this, uh, I had to go into the sidecar app and make sure that I unchecked show sidebar and show touch bar. If I didn't do this, uh, when I made the connection over to my iPad, the connection was not that great. And it was, uh, there was some errors in the way that the connection was made. So that's actually fairly important. Make sure, again, so this is in system preferences, make sure that the sidecar, uh, both show sidebar and show touch bar are, are unchecked. Otherwise, when you connect with Zoom, you're gonna have problems. So just make sure that's the case. So now I'm gonna make the connection to my iPad. And as I do that, a couple of things kind of change. But uh, my iPad is now turned into a second monitor for my MacBook Pro. So that's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing on my MacBook Pro. Uh, that's just a Zoom control. So in the Zoom program, click Stop Share. And now you no longer see my MacBook Pro screen. And I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to click Share Screen on Zoom. And then I'm going to click Desktop 2 which is my iPad. And now you should uh, be able to see my iPad. And so now I, this is how I introduced this little video uh, where you were actually looking at my iPad screen. And so now I can bring GeoGebra in here. If you want, you can maximize it. Sometimes people don't like maximizing it. It's kind of up to you. And you can um, write whatever you wish with the Apple Pencil. Um, one thing to note, your finger doesn't work. So when I go to touch this with my finger, I can't make notes on here. But, uh, so you can kind of see like, it doesn't work, but when I write with my pencil, it does. So that's a good way that you can direct your students' attention to what you want them to direct attention to, uh, direct their attention to while you're doing remote instruction. Um, and of course, in Zoom, if you're familiar with Zoom, you can record everything that you do to your computer or to the cloud. It's up to you. Um, uh, I kind of like recording it to my computer and then uploading the videos to YouTube because I like the controls for my students on YouTube a little bit more. But some people just don't like that extra step in their workflow. And so they just upload it to the Zoom cloud and let the students watch it on there. But that's totally up to you. You have every right to decide how you want to conduct your class remotely during these uh, challenging times. So I hope you found this brief video helpful to help you get a little bit more technically savvy with your remote instruction uh, by just using some uh, pretty widely available Apple, soft, uh, Apple hardware and the open source software um, GeoGebra. Um, if there's a need for some more videos, I'm happy to record some more so that uh, people can learn some more little quick tips for how to make the most out of uh, limited technical stuff to do remote instruction. Good luck out there, everybody. It's pretty hard right now. Bye-bye.